In 13 cities and 10 countries across the Pacific, they're playing our song. United Airlines, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve halfway around the world. Come fly the friendly skies. Summer Tour on ESPN is being brought to you by GE Lighting. For high-quality, dependable bulbs that are easy to see by, GE is light. By Showtime. Showtime exclusives. Here you see them, there you don't. And by Desinex, the number one cure for athlete's foot. Your satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. Now let's meet tonight's top five teams. Starting from the bottom of the stack, it's Ron Palumbi Jr. and Les Sykes. Their opponents in the opening match, last week's winner Jimmy Pensack and his senior partner Tita Semez. Qualifying in the number three position, the tandem of Mark McDowell and PBA Hall of Famer Dick Weber. They finished second in this event just two years ago. And beginning from the runner-up position, Dennis Rakaskis and his senior partner, John Handegard. Both are looking for their first national titles. And, of course, holding down the lead after 36 games this week, the current PBA Player of the Year, Brian Voss, and his senior partner, the showboat champion this year, Jimmy Certain. And welcome to beautiful Thruway Lanes in Buffalo, New York, for the championship round finals of the Senior Touring Pro Doubles Championship. Hi everyone, I'm Denny Schreiner and welcome to Buffalo, New York. Thruway Lanes here as we're just a couple of minutes away from the start of an outstanding championship. Working with me once again, PBA Hall of Famer Mike Durbin, a player who might be a senior player or a touring pro, pro player here in the next couple of years. But Michael, this is a, a very different type of an event for the professionals, both for the seniors and the touring players. Yeah, I really think it's a special event, Denny. It's an opportunity to see the styles of the old right alongside the styles of the new. And you see the, how different they are many times, but you see how similar they are when they knock down all 10 pins. I think it's a tournament just rich in tradition, and it's very enjoyable for the spectators. All right, time now to handicap the horses in uh, the number five slot here this evening. Ron Palumbi Jr. and Les Sykes, they had to really scratch and scrape just to get here. Well, they had to win some games at the end to get here, Denny, but Ron Palumbi is very hot. He finished third last week. Les Zykes is a former champion of this tournament, so it makes a formidable duo. And their opponents in the opening match, Jim Pensack, of course. He's red hot, and Tita Semez, a very tough senior. Well, Tim Pensack won just last week with an outstanding performance. Tita Semez is another champion of this tournament, plus he has four seniors event titles that he's won. So those two together, they got to win four games, but they're very tough also. In the number three position, Mark McDowell and Dick Weber, they seem to bring out the best in one another. Well, they bowled together before, and it seems like when Mark McDowell gets to bowl with Dick Weber that he gets about 10 pins a game better. So uh, last time that Weber rode McDowell and trusted him, and McDowell performed very well, we'll see how they go tonight. Dennis Rakaskis and John Handegard both vying for their first titles. They may help one another here this evening. Well, they're the unknown commodity, Denny. They're the uh, kind of rookies out here. Dennis, it's his first show of any kind, any time. John Handegard is a senior that's bowled very well. He's made three out of his last four senior tournaments. He's made the championship round. But like you say, neither one of them have ever won. We have to wait and see what they're going to do. All right, Mike, how tough will it be for Jimmy Certain and Brian Voss to bowl just five frames apiece and capture the title? Well, they're going to have some strategy involved. In fact, I think the strategy with all of the players tonight is that they're going to allow the Turing player to bowl potential seven frames on one lane while the senior bowls five frames on the other lane. I'm certain that that's what Certain and Voss are going to do, and I think that they'll have Voss try and finish the game in the 10th frame, relying on his experience. After all, he is PBA Player of the Year. Well, something old and something new provided here this evening between the senior and touring pro doubles. Back with the opening match here in just a moment or so. $28,000 on top, though, for the champions this week. $14,000 apiece. It's Ron Palumbi Jr. and Les Sykes against Jimmy Pensack and Tita Semez. The PBA on ESPN. With all the things your eyes have to do every day, it's good to know that GE Soft White is a warm, glowing light that's sensitive to the needs of the human eye. GE is light. We bring good things to life. These eyes will read millions of words, mostly in insufficient light. That's why GE made the Soft White Reader Light a soft yet brighter light. GE is light. We bring good things to life. 
Showtime is so hot this summer, the competition won't be able to stand the heat. Showtime's hot fun includes lots of big hits, like Bull Durham, Married to the Mob. You won't see those on HBO. You'll also see Big Business, Rambo 3. You won't see those on HBO either. So sign up now for Showtime's hot fun. Showtime exclusives. Here you see them, there you don't. Hello! My name is Jimmy Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. What, what, what? You know, the most important thing in boxing is to never get caught with your gloves down. There are only two things to bring them down, fatigue and jock itch. It's, it's, it's. Don't let jock itch hit you below the belt. Fight back with Cruex. Cruex kills jock itch fungus and helps stop painful burning, itching, and irritation. Time out, time out. I got an itch. Cruex, the number one cure for jock itch. Interested in a better hand soap? Not me. I can go. I don't need no lava soap, no. Regular soap won't always work, but lava with pumice will. Interested? No, no, no. Lava, but don't try to cope without it, so. Two-time defending champion Yvonne Lendl leads an all-star field of tennis greats at the Canadian Open. Coverage begins Thursday afternoon at 2 Eastern through the finals, live on ESPN. Welcome back to Thruway Lanes in Buffalo, New York. Just moments away from the start of tonight's Senior Touring Pro Doubles Championship. And there you see Jim Pensack taking the final practice shot. Tina Semez and Jim Pensack in the red. Ron Palumbi Jr. and Les Sykes in the blue. And I think right off the bat we should explain to the viewers, Denny, that the senior is going to bowl all his frames on one lane while the touring player will bowl all of his on the other lane. It's kind of a scotch doubles and you can't get a double without the two players striking back to back one with one another other than the 10th frame. 10th frame one can uh, get two strikes in a row himself. Championship round pair lanes 45 and 46. Good shot by Tita Semez leaves the solid four. And we might mention that uh, I think all of the players have been struggling in the practice round. Uh, none of them seem to be lined in on lanes 45 and 46 here at Thruway Lanes. So uh, our scores, I'm looking, if the guys bowl clean games and uh, make their spares and get a double somewhere along the line, they're going to be competitive. Will it make it any easier for them, though, Mike, that they only basically have to play on one lane? I think it will, yes, Danny. I think it definitely will make it easier for them. So ABC Hall of Famer Les Sykes with his opening shot. He's had some experience in this particular event. Won it a few years ago with his partner Steve Wunderlich. Well, he's going to utilize the Brooklyn side. Nice smile from the Hall of Famer. Ah. Like Mary Kay says, eh, it wasn't what I wanted, but I'll take it. Oh, absolutely. You got to run out those Brooklyns, Denny. Ron Palumbi Jr. bowled absolutely outstanding last evening as Zykes and Palumbi Jr. made a run, lost some pins in the afternoon round, and had to make a comeback last night. Which they did. Two, four, five. Just didn't quite make it up there. Kicked out the A pin, made the spare a little bit easier. There's his parents, Ron and Linda. And they've been here all week watching. Yeah, he's got a cheering section. He certainly has. Well, he's from Erie, which is not far away. Third place finish last week. Bowled very well, too. Could have easily won his match. Pensack defeated him last week. Hard and straight. <laughs> Spares up the two, four, five. Be interesting to even see the way these guys shoot spares tonight. The pros, the turning players, this is the way they shoot spares like this, hard and straight from the left side of the lane. And here's the man that was so outstanding last week. Some tremendous clutch bowling in each and every game. Not afraid to rip it. Looks like he pulls this shot a little bit through the nose it goes, and he leaves the 6'10". Just didn't get it out. He'd been swinging it uh, in practice way out past that and uh, did not give the ball the room that he wanted to at that time. Switches balls, goes to the shiny ball to shoot the spare. Yeah. 
Shiny means it's going to bite less and go straighter. And he still almost missed it. Woo! Breathing a sigh of relief, so a couple of spares, and the team of Semez and Pensack trailing by two, teed up quickly in the third. Uh, not much loss of time and action here this evening. The players will always be ready to play. Hey, there's a strike. In the pocket, Jack. That's what the senior player is there to provide, some leadership. Well, Tita has four senior titles already to his credit. Gets the ball well on the lane, comes in light, watch the five pin go over, and the head pin gets that seven, and Les doesn't look very confident, does he? Brooklyn again. Says a good thing going. Why change? Well, you know one thing, he's lined up. At least he's consistent. Five-step approach. Pushes the ball in the second step. Head very steady. Short backswing. Nice long slide. You never know by that that he threw it Brooklyn. Somebody moved down there. I don't know what it was. There's nobody behind the curtain. But something caught his eye. I think he heard a sound from behind, basically. Resets himself, trying for the first double in this match. Could take a 12-pin lead. Oh, great shot. Leaves the hard 10. His partner says, hey, I showed you the line. Why don't you go Brooklyn? He carries over there. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. So, boy, that's a heartbreaker, though, to throw a shot that good. And it's difficult to double in this atmosphere because you don't get the, the feeling of throwing two in a row. You're just trying to match things up. Hard and straight at the spare. No trouble. So a two-pin lead for the team of Zykes and Palumbi Jr. They had a golden opportunity there for a double, but when we come back, the team of Semez and Pensack will have the same opportunity. They're working on a strike in the third. Everybody at a new club across the USA. Let everybody be saved. The Chrysler Plymouth Way. Everybody be saved. Saving USA. All across the country. Chrysler Plymouth USA. Each and every day. Saving money in the USA. Let everybody be saved. Saving USA. Hurry to your neighborhood Chrysler Plymouth dealer today. Sea-Doo, a personal watercraft, so powerful, so advanced, and so easy to master. Sea-Doo, the only way to do it. Let Sea-Doo take you into a whole new world of fun. Purchase a Sea-Doo now with no money down, no payments until January 1990, and up to five years financing. Available at Anoka Ramsey Sports Center and Ericsson Marine. Well, that Tiger's not growling, uh, smiling a little bit. PBA Hall of Famer and uh, former Assistant National Tournament Director Harry Smith on hand this week. Outstanding bowler in his day, both PBA and ABC Hall of Famer. Out playing golf today. That's right, he's competing next week in Canton in the Ebonite Seniors Championship. And he'll be ready to go. Yes. Running him out. Pensack now in the fourth, could provide the first double of the match. Is it more room? And gets that light uh, tickler. There's Liz looking on. Uh, she got a lot of air time last week. <laughs> She's getting used to this idea. Teed up very quickly. So we see a replay of Jimmy's shot. Boy, he threw it quick, but I didn't know that it was that quick, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, he's a master at ball speed, isn't he? Looked a little quicker that time around. Oh, Samantha's down on one knee, and he knew right there he was locked in for the three-bagger. See how much further right Tita's playing than, uh, than uh, Pensek is. Where's this one going now? Brooklyn twice in a row, making some kind of move, shaking his head. He's moving the wrong way. He's moving left when he should go right. Thank <laughs> you. 
Tightens the line, though, and plays that Roy Buckley fallback shot and ends up with a strike in the fifth, his team trailing by 18. What do I know? <laughs> That's why he's down there bowling and I'm up here announcing. Well, very possibly. But no, you're right. I mean, uh, maybe he changed uh, the amount of lift he put on that shot as well. A little better speed, tightened his line up. He's obviously been moving on every shot. Well, he just got deep enough that time, but he, he's got to be really fine in there. Columbia tears the cover off of that one, tries to hold pocket and ends up with the big four. And just about put the death knell on this team right now as he just doesn't give it enough room. Well out on the lane, but there's the ball's not holding at all from that point. You've got to give it room, especially when you hook it as much as Ron Palumbi does, as he'll just fire hard at two of them. Ooh. Had that six pin dancing around, but that's it. The eight count down by 32 now. So Pensack in the sixth, if he strikes here, provides a 42 pin lead for his teammate Tita. Easy to get loose when you're 42 ahead. No, they're not there yet. Really gave that one room and the old equalizer, the 2 8 10. Jimmy style, five very quick steps. No push away to speak of. Hoist it back at this with that big step there. Now a short pivot step right here. Drives through with a slide and just gives it too much room. 2 8 10, and this is no picnic. Uh, he just has to hope something bounces out of it. He'll throw hard. Well, he's trying to hook it into it. See, some guys will throw it that spare left-handed. I've seen Marshall Holman make that left-handed, uh, or they'll throw a backup ball at it, a variety of different things, hard and straight, and hope something bounces out. It's <laughs> Needless to say, it's uh, very tough. But the big thing is there's only a difference of 17 pins now instead of 42. Lost 15 pins in the frame with the open. Semez tries to come back. Lovely arm swing. Nice shot for Tita Semez, who has been striking in the clutch for years on the PBA Tour. And it's interesting that our seniors here have three strikes apiece. Zykes has three. Semez has three. As he just pounds this one into the 1 3 pocket flush for Pensek and, and Semez. Our, uh, Pensek and Columbia are still searching for a strike. And we'll be back with more right after this. It started in Japan in 1907 and became one of the most respected automobile companies in the world, Daihatsu. Nearly a million vehicles a year, sold in over 130 countries. Cars, trucks, and utility vehicles of incredible quality at an affordable price. Daihatsu's reputation for reliability is well known throughout the world. See Daihatsu today, one of the most respected names in Japan for over 80 years, Daihatsu. The test of a great airline is not just how fast it moves you in the air, but how fast it moves you on the ground. That's why at some of the busiest airports in the world, United Airlines offers you the most advanced baggage systems, faster ticketing and boarding procedures, and the most spacious, convenient, efficient terminals in the business. United Airlines, from the ground up, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. In September, celebrate ESPN's 10th anniversary. From Big Ten battles to Ivy League tradition, the fall colors are spectacular on college football Saturdays. See highlights of every NFL game played that day on NFL Primetime. Your wildest dreams come true with computerized matchups of football's greatest teams ever on NFL Dream Season. Plus, daring drivers tear up the track with NASCAR and IndyCar excitement. Celebrate in September on ESPN. Now, if this looks confusing, it's because it really is. Uh, well, I thought it was the Kino board in Las Vegas myself. <laughs> <laughs> what it is, the touring players and the seniors have separate tournaments in qualifying. And then after they qualify, they were paired together based on where they finished. So obviously, that's where the numbers come into play. Well, you look at Palumbi, he was stuck on that number four right there. He had uh, four out of six rounds. Boss was in first uh, 
for a long time, and so was certain. Boy, look at Jimmy Pensack. Started 54th and started climbing up the hill. Fifth qualified second, and then ended up in the fourth position after six rounds of play. Really a very unique event in that they qualify separately, and boy, once they get to match play, then they're teammates. And they root for one another. And we should mention that the number one qualifier is paired with the number one qualifier in both the seniors and turning pros, two with two, right. and so on down the line. Sent that one out. He was lucky to get eight. Yeah, he was. Leaves the one, two. Never even thought about touching the head pin with that shot. Well, when he moved left, he made that decision to move left. He's only got one option in there, and that is what you call the fallback shot. In other words, he almost starts the ball at the head pin and lets it fade uh, into the one, three pocket. Of course, if it hits a little light there, you can be staring at some pins. <laughs> Makes the adjustment on the spare, and he's seen the one-two pocket here this evening. See, the danger, again, is that if he gives the ball any room from in here, it's just not going to hook back. He hit about the 16th board, and it just was gone, and he knew it. He says, get eight, and it did. That's when you start singing, sailing, sailing. <laughs> yeah, your history when you let it go there. He'll figure it out, though. Left the big four last trip, made the adjustment, got the wall shot, Shaker, and Columbia comes up with a strike in the eighth. Well, that's the second strike by the turning pros. The seniors are ahead six to two, right? I noticed you were keeping score there. Are you rooting for one contingent no, no. over the other? Well, would I do that? I don't know. All right, I'll take the touring pros. And you can have the seniors. Thank you. All right. Goes from 2 8 10 to 6 10 and could have had company there. Just tough condition right now, Dan. It's just a very uh, exacting, precise condition. Tita seems to have solved it. I really think Les Zykes would be better moving out where Tita is, but Les only has one more frame to bowl. Brings up an interesting point. Do the touring players line up off the touring players and the seniors line up off their senior counterparts? Uh, I think that they're discussing all the time what the lanes are doing for each other. And even though one may hook the ball a lot more than the other, sometimes you can still line up off one another. But in this case, you can see that Plumby, who hooks it more, is playing further right than Zykes, who doesn't hook it that much. Hi. Busts it down, leaves only the six pin as uh, they're trying to limp to the finish line right here. Now with a spare here and three strikes in the tenth, it would be 212. Interesting, though, Zykes and Plumby right now are in a position that they could strike the match out would lock them out. They still have a potential score of 216. And they know that at this point, obviously. Obviously. The big shot is Zykes in the ninth frame. Has to hook. All right. So Semez with a spare in the ninth. And now Les Zykes, who has a pair of Brooklyns and a fall away strike to his credit thus far would trade all three of those for an X right here in the ninth. Well he's hit the pocket once and he just has to tell himself play it tight give it no room. And he got it. Woo! Down to six pins now. Palumbi can take the lead with the first one of the ten. Well a marvelous shot turned in by the senior that time and uh, Less at this point, hoping that his partner is able to throw a couple of strikes here in the tenth. They'll move on to game number two. I'll tell you what, if I think if he throws one strike, it's going to be enough, Danny. Quite a turnaround. They were down by 32 at the midway point. And, oh, pretty shot. That's his best of the game. And he knew it the moment it left his hand. He struggled on television the last three or four trips out, and he wanted that one badly. Now he finished second in this tournament with Billy Walden last year, and he bowled outstanding, especially his first game. What a good shot he threw here now. Watch the follow-through, Dan. Watch the follow-through. Just trusted that one so pretty. 
sent it out to about the eighth board. Now watch the six pin, just alive, which tells you that he just had heavy fingers in that ball. This is the lockout shot here. Good speed. Oh! Well, he left a solid 10 earlier in the game. Gets another one, and Les Zykes with, well, you could just a little see encouragement, but what, what more could Palumbi do with that shot? He just, what, what Les said, he says, beautiful shot. And, and there was just nothing more that he could do. So 205 if he spares here, and that opens the door for a double and four. And Pensack and Semez will move on. So now it's up to the touring player, Jimmy Pensack, as Zykes and Palumbi offer some beautiful clutch bowling in the ninth and the tenth. And Jimmy Pensack met every challenge last week to win his first title. We'll see what he can do this week. Defeated Dave Ferraro in the championship game, 231 to 216. Let's see if it's still fresh in his memory. Has to hurry. No way. Well, he trusted it, gave it plenty of room, and Semez and Pensack will have to settle for fifth place prize money this week. Last one went high. He's telling himself this time, give it room. You know, don't send it up high. And he did give it room, and it just wasn't going to make it back as it got out to about the fifth board, and it just had no chance. So Semez and Pensack finish up in the five slot, and they'll split $7,000. At one point in time, they led by 32. What a turnaround for those two gentlemen. Nevertheless, a successful week indeed. Jimmy Pensack will pack it up for the summer. Meanwhile, Tita Semez heads to Canton. And, of course, Palumbian Zykes with smiles all around. The reason why, because they get to play another game. And their opponents, Mark McDowell and PBA ABC Hall of Famer Dick Weber, when we return to Thruway Lanes. Budweiser presents Tommy. The Who, live from Los Angeles. August 24th, the rock and roll event of a lifetime. The Who and the King of Beers, celebrating 25 years of rock and roll on one historic night. Tommy. Tommy, can you hear me? Budweiser presents The Who. Tommy, only on pay-per-view television. Call your local cable operator for details. This Bud's for you. My athlete's foot kept flaring up. I'd put it out, and it'd just flare up again. Then my doctor told me about Tenactin. It cures recurring athlete's foot. Use it regularly, and it'll keep the fire from coming back. Tenactin puts the fire out for good. The 20th anniversary issue of Penthouse is on sale now. It's a celebration of everything you love most about Penthouse. Hey, come to the party! September Penthouse, on sale now. Looked like my old Junior League average, right around about 199. Well, you see, uh, the seniors there averaging 193. That was all seniors that entered the tournament, of which I think there were 88 this year. Turing players average 207. Average to qualify. Now that's for the seniors there. They took the 202 average for them to, to uh, make the top 18 and a 198 average to cash. And of course, you've seen the difficulty of the players on the telecast this evening. It wasn't an easy condition. There's the size of the field. 72 Turing pros, 88 on the senior side. And uh, some outstanding bowling indeed by Voss and Jimmy Certain all the way through the qualifying and the match play. They were impressive. Now you see some big games, and of course, you're dividing these numbers by two. And you see Westlake again up there with Jack Corner, and uh, he just wasn't quite able to make it here this week, but he still bowled well in the finals once again, just not in the championship round. Yes, and colorful Guppy Troop coming back to play in this one this week. He and Mickey Spezio with a nice 495 game. And coming up next, average builders for all of you players out there who have left the bucket, the dinner bucket. Pay special attention because Mike Durbin will teach you how to convert it. For tonight's tip, I thought I'd like to show you how to convert a very common but extremely difficult spare. And that spare is what we call the dinner bucket, which is the 2458 for right-handers 
and the 3569 for left handers. The reason this spare is so difficult is it's very easy to chop the two off the five. And when you guard against that, then many times you don't make it up and you leave the A pin. Now basically there's two different ways that we can shoot this spare. We can shoot it off of our strike line or we can shoot it from the extreme left side of the lane. We're gonna look at both of these tonight. The first way we're gonna look at is to try and shoot it off of my strike line. As I get my ball in this bowling center, I'm standing on board 18 right here and aiming at the eighth board in order to get a strike. Now the move to convert this spare is to move five boards to the right, a full five boards all the way over to board 13. If I were shooting just the two, four, five, I would only move four boards and use my strike target. But in order to get that eight pin in the back, I've got to move five. Now I set myself up and my target is gonna be the eighth board and we'll see if I can make it. That's how you make it from your strike target. Now we're gonna take a look at how to make it from the left side of the lane. And basically what the pros do here is they do just that. We move over here to the left side of the approach, wherever is comfortable with you. Now this dot right here is the 30th board. So I move over in that general area. Now what most of the pros do in this case is they'll pick a target out there, probably the center arrow or a little left of the center arrow, and they're gonna throw the ball very hard and very straight. You'll notice that with all the pros shooting spares, they like to throw at them straight. The reason is this reduces the chance for a chop. The straighter that ball goes, the less chance I have to chop the spare. I might add here that the most important spare conversion maybe of my career was making the dinner bucket in 1984 at the Firestone Tournament of Champions. In the first ball, the 10th of the first game of that television show, I had to make the dinner bucket in order to force Steve Cook to mark. I shot it from this angle, I made the spare, he didn't strike, and I went on to win the tournament. So you can see just how important one spare conversion can be. All right, I'm setting myself up here, right around the 30th board, and I'm gonna aim just about at the fourth arrow, and I'm gonna throw the ball hard and straight. There you have it. That's both ways to make it, off your strike line and from the left. If you ask me which way I prefer, it really depends on the bowling center. But over my career, most of the time, I shot it off my strike line for the simple reason that I knew what the ball was going to do in that portion of the lane. We'll see you again next week when we'll have another average builder that hopefully will improve your average. And we've got game number two coming up. Mark McDowell and Dick Weber, the number three qualifiers, take on Palumbi Jr. and Sykes. We'll be back with more right after this. Ortho air conditioners, pressure. Builder Square. Well, we buy by the train load. Closet shelving, mini blinds, patio. Direct from top Racket manufacturers. Mowers, tractors, There's no middleman, no frills, no membership fees. Paint, center, and at Builder Square, Thompson, we won't be undersold. Ever. HGH coolers, easy painter, lots Builder better, Square, grills, where the values keep Madison, rolling on. Sappers, because the more we sell, the lower the price. How far can you drive your car on Phillips 66 Trop Arctic? 100,000 miles. Just by changing your oil every 3,000 miles? Okay, more than 100,000 miles. Oh, sure, Trop Arctic can protect your engine in the heat and the cold, but over 100,000 miles? How about 200,000 miles? Come on, how far can you really drive on Trop Arctic? 250,000 miles so far. Phillips 66 Trop Arctic. Long live your car. And no, Dick Weber is not throwing the first shot of match number two. He's finishing up his practice. With four players, obviously, there are more practice balls. It takes a little longer to get things started. And uh, Dick is about like Les Zykes. He's just totally confused on this right-hand lane here. Be interesting to see what they do now. If they, if they make Mark McDowell finish on that left lane, that means that Les Zykes is going to have to finish in the 10th frame on the right lane, and he hasn't been very confident at all. So there's where the strategy starts coming in. All right, handshakes all around here for game number two. Does Zykes go to another bowling ball in the meantime? I don't know. Looks like he put something else on the rack. It's either that or perhaps he put a little tape in the thumb hole. He went over the other lane and threw some practice shots. Okay. 
But that's exactly what they've done. Now, Rob Palumbi's got to start the bench. They would have had the option to switch lanes and put Palumbi on the right lane and Zykes on the left, but they didn't do that. All right. Strategy, obviously uh, very important in this doubles competition. Palumbi tries to pick up where he left off in the 10th and ends up with a two-pin. And he's happy with that. Uh, to come down a little bit from that great finish he made in the 10th frame to win the first game. And he's happy he's going to get a spare out of this, hopefully. Ron in search right now of title number four overall. He spares up with the two pin. We might mention that uh, the winners of this one don't necessarily get a berth in the Firestone Tournament of Champions. No, there is no berth in the Firestone Tournament of Champions. For the seniors, the only tournament that they have that has the reward of the Firestone Tournament of Champions is next week's, the uh, Senior Championship in Kent. He's amazing. You never got a strike in the practice balls. They turn the lights on and he comes right out and throws a strike. Well, there you see him clapping the hands, patting his partner on the back as he's done all week long. And uh, these team, or I should say this team, uh, has bowled very well together uh, in both years when they were teamed up together. Well, it would have to pump you up to bowl with such an outstanding legend as Dick Weber. They wanted to get off that quick double and get ahead, and the old solid 10 says, not so fast, boys. Of course, see, for Weber, all the years of team bowling and doubles and the, all the ABCs that the older players used to bowl, and they're familiar with the team format. The young touring pros, not quite the same not philosophy. Not so much, right. I mean, Weber was weaned on that. He bowled with the Budweiser's years ago. He used to bowl with Ray Bluth in the doubles. Uh, competitor I think he probably appreciates a partner like Weber and he was a tremendous college player for uh, West Texas State and came out right out was rookie of the year great things were expected from him you know and he finally uh, starting to pay off this year he's had his best year so far I think he won this year for the first time out in Fresno during the spring tour just missed the telecast last week. Sykes goes back to work, playing the ball back, tries to tighten it up, and Les Sykes has been a magician on lane 46. <laughs> He's got a trip of the, the four pit or the six pit or whatever, doesn't he? he? Doesn't say how. Just knock him down and go to the next frame. Let's see if Palumbi can take advantage of the strike up in the second. A little too good. Ball hooked a little sharply through the nose. He leaves the 4-9. Just a, a, a hair on the speed. I mean, it was decent speed. It just wasn't the adrenaline speed that he had in the 10th frame. And it's finished just a little bit more. And the 4-9 is a result. Watch the ball chop through and chop the 5 off the 9. The 2-pin goes to the wall and gets the 7, but not the 4. Hard and straight. Can't bounce it out, so an open. In the third for Columbia and Zykes, and now it's a 12-pin advantage for the team of Dick Weber and Mark McDowell. Dumped that at the foul line that time. Weber taking six steps. And I was teasing him earlier that the reason he was doing this is he's nearing his 60th birthday. He was taking one step for each 10 years, but he said it slows him down. That's the reason that he's doing it. And the classic style of Dick Weber kind of came up at the foul line. That follow through has gone to the right like that for years and years and years. If he lives to be 90, he'll start that approach at the snack counter. Little hop, skip, and a jump, but he spares up in the third. And this is a 10-pin match. McDowell leaving the solid 10, the first trip. Game number two here of the Senior Touring Pro Doubles Championship from Thruway Lanes in Buffalo, New York. Oh, wow. 
carbon copy of the shot in the second. Palumbi left two on that lane uh, the first game, and now McDowell's left two already. Interesting to see if all the turning players choose to bowl on that left lane. So far, we're two for two. And of course, the team with the higher seed gets the option of starting or finishing and choosing Correct. lane assignment. Correct. Eddie. Arden straight at the 10 pin, has it no trouble. Well, if it weren't for the 10, Weber and McDowell might be off to a lead, a bigger lead perhaps. They're ahead by nine. And we'll be back with more bowling here from Thruway Lanes in Buffalo, New York, as the family members, the fiancés, the wives, plenty of relatives here. Hey, close out, we mean close out. It can only happen once a year. The summer close out at Brookdale Chrysler Plymouth. 35 Dudo Baron Coupes equipped the way you want them with auto, air, stereo, tilt, cruise, and more. They were 13.6, now just 10.995 or 191 per month with only 10% down. 35 LeBaron Coupes, just 10995 But when they're gone, they're gone. There's never been a better time to buy than now, so hurry to Brookdale Chrysler Plymouth Summer Closeout Sale. Conveniently located south of 694 on Brooklyn Boulevard. Luxury everyone can afford from Capital Plumbing and Heating Supply, 600 Lafayette Road. Two-time defending champion Yvonne Wendell leads an all-star field of tennis greats at the Canadian Open. Coverage begins Thursday afternoon at 2 Eastern through the finals, live on ESPN. And we're back. Les Sykes, Ron Palumbi trailing by nine early stages of match number two. And it'll be Les Sykes in the fourth on lane 46. Weber and Sykes uh, jousting a bit, perhaps verbally. They've matched up through the years. Uh, this is a competition, but the players are still having some fun out there. And Les, who seemed the most lost, is the only one striking. <laughs> Good point. Maybe that's the key. Lost like a fox, right? Uh oh, that's, that's Brooklyn. Brooklyn all the way. But his carry on that side has been decent. This time he leaves the nine. <laughs> he was two for two before. Uh, he knows that he can't give it an inch room. So he gets there, see the swing out a little bit, he brings it back, the follow through goes right, the ball goes left, and he's looking away already. Help, help. <laughs> his son Lyle, a very outstanding bowler in his own right, is probably at home in the Chicago area saying, come on, Dad, move the feet, move the target, do something. Harry Kay looks concerned. Well, they're down by only nine pins. They were down by 32 at this point last game, so the comeback kids. They're comfortable in that position, the underdog role. Four nine was flirting there again for a second. <laughs> Some overzealous, eerie fans, perhaps. Jelly Jade, he says, I need one more. <laughs> Nine's not good enough. <laughs> he must not have seen the four pin from down the lanes. Uh, outstanding crowds all week long, but they've got them jammed in here this evening. We're on lane 45 here with Columbia, and there's fans all the way down to about the five lanes. So now he says, okay, you can cheer. I got the spare. And they do root for their hometown favorites. Oh, I mean, a few years you. ago when Tom Baker was on the show, Roy Buckley called this place Bakerville. So, <laughs> <laughs> always thought that was in California. Not so. They were hanging from the rafters that year when Bakes was in the finals. He sets it short like he wants, and it's flush. Well, at Weber's a shifty character. Rather than lift it out on the lane, he's laying it down at the foul line to get that little extra roll. Well, he rolled it right in there, just dead flush. Weber always has been a master playing that tight line and giving the ball no room in the, the frozen rope shot, we've said. 
I think that frozen rope's starting to thaw a little bit, though, don't you? He still looks pretty good to me. Yeah. But don't tell him I said that. He's two out of three. McDowell has been snake bit on this lane. Now he's going to leave the four pin. Well, three shots in the pocket. Nine spare, nine spare, perhaps nine spare. Three shots as well as you can throw him. He hasn't got a strike to show for it. Opening game. And I, I might point out here, Denny, and so far we're halfway through this game, that we have three strikes between the two teams, and they're all by senior players. Mm -hmm. Of course, we'll be tallying up that score as the competition continues. There's uh, Mark's fiance. I think he told me they're uh, going to be married in May of 90. He also wanted me to make sure I said hello to his mom, Sandy, in Monona, Wisconsin. Gives more, more room. Nice shot. Well, we keep telling him he's playing the lanes wrong, and he's had more strikes in this championship round than any other performer. Obviously, he's saying, Mike, stay up here. I know what I'm doing down there. Playing that Buckley Coco Johnson fallback shot. Boy, the, that's, that was popular in the early 70s. Trip out the two, but can't quite get that done. So still no doubles here in game number two. Here's a replay of Les Zykes' strike on lane 46, coming in from that deep angle, solid in the one three pocket right over board 17. Can't do it any better. Ball never left board 17. Did you see that? Well, it well, wouldn't be. because from that angle, it wouldn't be finishing that much, Denny. Yeah, not a chance. Down by 10, Columbian Zykes, when we come back to Thruway Lanes in Buffalo, New York. And uh, the lead is eclipsing as well here in upstate New York. I'm sure you know that anyone who's selling their house is hoping for one thing, to see one of these. But how can you be sure your house will sell? Well, one real estate company has the answer, ERA. Because if they don't sell your house, They'll buy it. So if you're thinking of selling, call the right real estate company. Call your local independent ERA broker. Folks who use Tartar Control Crest have a few things to say about their cleanings. Wonderful. Great. It's marvelous. That's it? Okay. You should care Beautiful. for me. Because dental cleanings are easier with Tartar Control Crest. It's awful nice. <laughs> yeah. Paradise. Woo! It's what I love to see. So use the toothpaste more dentists recommend. Wonderful. It's wonderful. Tartar Control Crest, the dentist's choice, is hard on tartar and easy on you. All right. <laughs> that was a, a lunar eclipse, Mike. Uh, were you aware of that? Yes, it started at uh, 941 and goes to what, 11 or 921? 921. I've got this written down because I've been studying 11, about this 11 eclipse. 56. And, of course, uh, it, it ends at 11.56. And uh, follow the bouncing ball, as it were, and sing along with us here at Thruway Lanes. Oh, another solid 10. We have more solid 10s than we have strikes tonight. Look at McDowell. He's pumped up. He's saying, can't we get a break anywhere along the way? Well, you look at the nines in that game. They've got uh, one, two, three, four nines, two strikes. Good poker hand. <laughs> four nines and two tens, huh? Sure. That's even a better liar's poker hand. Weber sticks and makes. Ah, the lovely Juanita. How many times has she seen her hubby? in the championship rounds. And now, of course, her superstar son, Pete, although dad finished ahead of him this week. You know, in this tournament, they did bowl together last year. That's it, right. But it was just by the way that they qualified. Uh, obviously, they can't choose to bowl with one another. It's how you qualify, and they didn't qualify opposite one another this year. Tight match here. 
Colombian Zykes defeated Semez and Pensac 205 to 188 in game number one. Let's see if better things prevail for Mr. McDowell and how can the five pin slip past the four and not get the job done? Well, they're running out of frames, uh, but they're still maintaining their lead. If he makes this, it's eight pins. McDowell's two tens and two fours, and he's 0 for 4 in the pocket. And again, uh, I have known bowlers in the past that have kept track of their pocket hits and the percentage of carrying. And if you don't carry well better than 50%, you have no chance of cashing in a PBA event. 50% will not make you any money. <laughs> Now watch this come in light. Watch the five pin go behind the four, if we can see it here. The head pin will go in front of it. The five pin goes behind it, gets the seven. The head pin bounces up there, rocks the four, but it doesn't fall. A perplexed Les Sykes. Effective, nonetheless. Who has all of the strikes for his team so far. Tries to continue the trend, sets it down softly. Another strike for Zykes, and uh, a thought perhaps of even running that one out. And he had four strikes in the first game. He has three so far in this game, so Les Zykes has seven strikes. Ron Palumbi had two in the first game. That's right. But he got the ones where it mattered. And the tenth. 217 if Palumbi and Zykes would finish with a five bagger. And this is the biggest shot of this match for Ron Palumbi. They can take the lead with this strike. Uh oh, the guy is just responding to pressure situations. And obviously uh, receiving the plaudits of his partner, Les Zykes, now the heat on Dick Weber and company. And it's very important for Weber to strike on this ball. Keep that margin at just two pins. They're two pins behind. Set his partner up for the 10th frame, who's got to get a break sooner or later. happy at all with a shot. Well, with a spare here and a strikeout, it would be 204 for McDowell and Weber. Well, they've got to take it one at a time. The spare is almost a foregone conclusion. I haven't seen Weber miss too many six pins. It's whether McDowell can get up there and throw a double in the 10th frame to take that lead. He makes this, and they're down by three. Dead center. And again, here it is on the Turing player's shoulders right here. Ron Palumbi performed in the first game. Can Mark McDowell do it here in the second game? Hasn't missed the pocket yet. Doesn't have a strike. I think he's going to strike right now, Denny. I don't believe it. 0 for 5. Two tens, two fours, and now a solid eight. Now watch this solid eight. Is it if we can get it on replay? The head pin is going to turn to the left. It's going to hit the two pin. The butt of the head pin is going to hit the five before the ball. And then the, the ball. Five pin is moved slightly off, and the ball takes the five straight back after it's been moved by the head pin. And the five normally takes out the eight. Maybe the worst break of the year on national television. Mark McDowell has bowled superbly and has nothing to show for it. It's a four-pin match, and this is almost automatic that he will strike on this ball, the fill ball. Well, that's what makes the game of bowling it what it is, I guess. Yes, uh, you can throw a perfect shot and end up with the perfect tap, the eight. Well, I always thought a lot of tens were perfect taps, too, mm -hmm. Dave. <laughs> Strike. It's been that kind of an evening. So 16 pins in the 10th frame for Les Sykes will enable the team of Sykes and Columbia Jr. to move on to game number three. 
He must have some kind of spare strike, though. Left, left. Oh, way left. A one, three, eight. As he grabs his throat, and that's exactly there was the pressure of the moment that he could not respond to. Now, to make the spare, I mean, he's still in the match. He's got to make this. He didn't want to give it any room because he didn't want to lose the count. So he just turned it early and misses the head pin on the left and is fortunate to get seven. He's got to hit this spare on the left to make it. It's in trouble, big trouble. That's it. Sykes wraps it around. Palumbi with head down, glances up, and it's a loss. And Les Sykes right now probably feeling about as bad as anybody in the building. Well, it just happens. You know, sometimes we respond well to pressure situations, and sometimes we don't. But when you look at his performance through the first two games, he was the reason why they had the lead in the second game and that they had won the opener. Dick Weber, you know, is feeling bad right now for Les Sykes. But basically what it comes down to is that those two will move on. And before they do in game number three, we've got an interesting feature for featuring Carmen Salvino, the great one from Chicago. Oh, Harold, it's lovely. I hope you like it. <laughs> it reminds me of when he first got electric light back when I was a child. Oh. <laughs> Daddy used to draw his chair up to that light and read to us. Mm. Oh, and memories. But, Harold, this is the 80s. <laughs> and I wanted a Bud Light. If you want the one light that outshines them all, ask for Bud Light. Kill the light, will you, Harold? Oh, because everything else is just a light. Hey, is that Don Mattingly? Nope. Look, it's Cal Ripken. Guess again. The AJD Cap Company presents authentic Major League Baseball signature caps featuring 80 of your favorite players' names, numbers, and signatures. Take it from me, Mel Allen, they're sure to become collector's items. To order yours, just call 1-800-221-1200. Hey, isn't that Dwight Gooden? Nice try. In 1955, the PBA as we know it today wasn't born yet. The national television show was Championship Bowling, usually starring Carmen Salvino, Chicago's bowling wonder boy. On this show, he rolled a three-game total of 846. No one has beat that score on national television to this day. 33 years and 18 titles later, at 55 years young, Carmen Salvino is known the world over as the PBA's greatest showman for his colorful lane antics. His game has changed radically over the years, but the result is the same. Just last summer, Carmen won the senior pro doubles in Cheektowaga, New York. National title number 19. I've never been goal oriented because I'm the kind of person that if I was to pick a goal and achieve it, then what's left? And I have to look for another new goal. To me, the fact that I've always been a student and looked for longevity, there's, that's the only goal I have to last the longest of anybody and to be the best ever of anybody for the longest period of time. He became familiar with the sport by setting pins at the age of 14. By 17, he was the youngest bowler in the then popular Chicago Classic League. He's proud of his entry into the Italian American Sports Hall of Fame and has also been inducted into three bowling halls of fame. When it comes to respect, I think the greatest compliment I ever received is when we started the Professional Bowlers Association Hall of Fame, I was one of the first five guys picked and when your peers, people that are great bowlers, say, hey, you're one of the best that ever lived, because we want you in there first, that says it all. Even today, Carmen is quite the entertainer. I told you, takes the right touch. You've got to be an expert to do this shot. Now, a standing ovation will do. <laughs> Going around that ball with 
strongest fingers that human hands can deliver. Boy, I tell you, that was so good, it frightened me. <laughs> He's studied every aspect of the game and even has his own patent on a new ball. I'm doing research and development. I'm doing exhibitions. I'm bowling on the Pro Tour, the Nationals. I bowl on the Seniors. And I, I do, uh, I'm doing consultant work for the Ebonite International. And as a result, I'm working seven days a week for the last 10 years, and I'm, I'm really going to have to take a vacation. For 38 years on the PBA Tour, Carmen Salvino has been finding new ways to get an edge on his competition. At 55 years old, he's found some new answers from a very ancient discipline. He has found that breathing exercises can help both his concentration and his game. What I'm trying to do is build his balance and give him more power. What happens is we get a little older and our muscles start deteriorating. And I'm involved in the martial arts, so I'm helping him in martial arts and working with equipment with him. The fact that I'm still bowling at a level of efficiency at 55 is surprising to a lot of people, but not surprising to me because I've worked hard to do that. And I've worked hard on my mind. I've worked hard on my exercises. His partner at the health club is his wife, Jenny. The two have been married for 34 years. I think I can sum it up in one phrase. It hasn't been dull. <laughs> it's been a, ups and downs, but there's been more ups than downs. And it's been a good life. Carmen is obsessed with staying in shape. He carries his own workout gear wherever he goes. See, in bowling, you want el what they call elongated muscles. You don't want short muscles, because short muscles don't give you a fluid swing. So all my design is what I call extensor exercises, reach out exercises, long exercises, anything that'll make you strong on a, and keep those arms long, keep those legs fluid. So keep the stomach fairly strong, the back fairly strong, things like that. But I don't want no bulk on me. I want strength without bulk. Carmen and Ginny Salvino have spent their entire lives on the bowling tour and see themselves very much involved for years to come. The actual traveling has been very difficult for a lot of years, but the bowling and the roar of the crowd and the excitement of the one-on-one -on -one when I make that finals and looking in that guy's eyes and he looks in my eyes and I know he's out to get me and I'm out to get him. No, I can't be, that never got old. I mean, uh, that will never get old. I'll always be a competitor. Whether I'll be able to or not, that probably if I, if I was in a wheelchair, I'd probably find a way to design the wheelchair to bowl. You'll still be practicing. I'll still be back there watching, and we'll be going to spending part of our time at the health club. <laughs> Even though we might have to get there with canes, but we'll be there. <laughs> ah, lovely feature. Brian Foss says he's certain, Jimmy certain, his partner, that when they return, they're going to win this championship. He'll chat with Mike Durbin when we return. The Vector Series, a revolutionary new concept. The Vector, for the person seeking pro roll and increased bin carry, the secret lies within. In traditional balls, the weight block is toward the outer surface. In the Vector 1, it's closer to the heart of the ball. In the Vector 2, next to the heart. The revolutions increase, giving you maximum striking power. The Vector Series, from Columbia 300, sold only in lanes and pro shops. ESPN is your ticket to Sunday night NFL when the Eagles and Jets go head to head. The rifle arm of Randall Cunningham takes aim on what could be a super season for the high flying Eagles. The finally tuned Jets are ready to take off and soar to new heights. Mike Patrick and Joe Theismann bring you the head to head action of Sunday night NFL at 8 Eastern, live on ESPN. And with me are our tournament leaders, PBA Player of the Year, Brian Voss, and the winner of the Showboat Senior Invitational, Jimmy Certain. Jimmy, you're no longer a touring player anymore. When you're not uh, winning senior tournaments nowadays, what are you doing now? I'm working uh, for my former sponsor who sponsors me now, and I work at Parkway Lanes. You know, Pie Bates is my sponsor, and I've been back at home in Alabama since last August. I went to work for him in, in January. You feel back home back in Alabama now? Yeah, I do. I can get my, my draw back. To get your draw back. <laughs> Have you ever bowled with Brian before? I've crossed with him a few times, and uh, he's a good friend of mine. Uh, we've 
run around a bit a little bit together and um, we've had a lot of fun bowling together this week. How was the chemistry for you, Brian? Real good, you know, uh, Jimmy was a touring player up in the time. He was a senior just recently and I've seen him bowl well. Uh, and that's a confidence builder, it really is. I've seen him bowl real well and he did good this week. Did you guys give each other advice this week? Uh, not really, you know, we, we just kind of kept each other loose. Uh, you know, I trust his ability and he trusted mine. Uh, I bowled real well in the first few games of match play, and, and he held me up the last few games. So that's what doubles is about. How was it, Blaine, with the player of the year this year? Well, I, I, I had my stirrups and my whip, and I went right to it. <laughs> Are you saying that he was carrying you, Jimmy? Well, not, not, not exactly, but I sure had a good horse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys have one game to bowl to win this title. What's your strategy? Well, I feel like I'm going to win this one for Brittany and, and Scott, my son and, and my daughter and my mom. So your strategy is emotional. Right. I'm, I'm after it. All right. How about uh, strategic strategy? I mean, uh, picking which lane. Who's going to finish? Are you going to finish? I'm going to throw the, the balls in the 10th frame. Jimmy's going to start. He's going to be bowling on the right lane, and I'll bowl on the left lane. Uh, we both feel like we've got a great shot. So if, you, if Weber and McDowell win this next match, then you're going to make Weber finish on that right lane. That's correct. <laughs> well, we've seen what happens when one senior had to finish the match to get a mark. We're going to see Dennis Rakakis and John Handigard taking on Mark McDowell and Dick Weber. Don't go away. We'll be right back. The X Excitement Countdown. Now get the biggest cashback savings ever on our hottest selling cars. You can count on up to $1,850 cash back on Grand Prix and $1,850 cash back on Grand Am or 2.9% financing on any new 89 Pontiac. Plus, you could save hundreds more with special factory to dealer incentives. Count on the biggest total savings of the year now. It's Excitement Countdown at your Pontiac Excitement Dealers. The heat wave is on at Northtown Nissan with steaming August used car deals. These vehicles are priced to sell and sell fast. With approved credit, the nation's number one volume, Nissan dealer will send you home. And at 87 Dodge, $86 a month. On 88 Le Mans, $94 a month. On 84 Isuzu, 122 a month. If you've been looking for a better deal, stop. These prices are available only at Northtown Nissan. Bring your checkbook. Better yet, we'll finance you on the spot. Sizzling exclusively at Northtown Nissan, 7810 University Avenue Northeast, where everybody rides few words on reading for success. Things are happening so fast right now that the business magazines are history. I need relevant information every day. Today's Wall Street Journal. Faster, tougher, smarter. Call 800-228-1900 for this special journal offer. 12 weeks, just $29.75 with a money-back guarantee. Call 800-228-1900 now for the Wall Street Journal. In September, celebrate ESPN's 10th anniversary. From Big Ten battles to Ivy League tradition, the fall colors are spectacular on college football Saturdays. See highlights of every NFL game played that day on NFL Primetime. Your wildest dreams come true with computerized matchups of football's greatest teams ever on NFL Dream Season. Plus, daring drivers tear up the track with NASCAR and IndyCar excitement. Celebrate in September on ESPN. Well, many people have said through the years that Dick Weber has led a charmed life, but certainly here this evening, it's come to fruition. Well, you remember a few years ago in the Senior Invitational in Vegas, J.B. Blaylock uh, needed a mark in the 10th and missed the 10 pin. And uh, what more do we need to say? Mr. Weber, he edged out Carmen Salvino last year there. Back to live action. John Handegard, an outstanding senior player, lets this one go dead left. And John... He did that on purpose. Chuckles. He does just so Les wouldn't feel so bad. Wow. <laughs> well, John said he was uh, a tad lost during warm-ups. Uh, he obviously hasn't come up with a road map since then. Well, both Brian and uh, Jimmy told me that they're going to play out. They're going to play right of the second arrow. Handegard practiced out. He said they were further out in practice than they were the entire week. Nice adjustment, good second shot, so the handyman comes up with a spare in the first. So Weber and McDowell get their same game plan. I, I wouldn't have allowed that to happen if I were coming on. Hi. 
Swansea, Brooklyn. We've seen a few of those tonight. All right, now the reason why the players are throwing Brooklyn's mic is because they're afraid if they throw the ball a little right, it's not going to come back. Well, plus it's just a fine line. You know, if they give it room, it doesn't come back. So they're trying to play it tight into the one three pocket. If they hit the one board they're looking at, it stays there. But if they're a board left, they now don't just go through the nose. They're going Brooklyn. Well, why don't you go to a ball that hooks more and give yourself a little opportunity to throw it to the right? Well, because then it bites early, Denny. Okay. All right, makes sense. In fact, uh, Brian Boss told me that he's going to take a hard ball and move outside so it'll go straighter. Mark McDowell. When was the last time a player won a game on national television without throwing a strike? And throwing every ball in the pocket. And he still hasn't had a strike, but uh, he didn't hit the pocket this time. And there's Mark's dad. As you I mentioned know, Mom Sandy is at home. You know what's terrible about looking at that man right there? What? Is he looks probably younger than I am. Well, I'm certainly having a problem right now determining when you see the picture of McDowell and Weber figuring out which one is the senior player and which one is the touring player. Webbs, do we have a count, by the way, on strikes for seniors? Webbs is 59, players? approaching the big 6-0, and he looks as if he's 35. Oh, and an update on the senior versus touring pro strike count. Is that what we're going for now? That's what I was looking for. Do you need your glasses to see this? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I'm trying to decipher it here and see what it says. All right. And as far as I can see, touring players have four strikes, and the seniors have 12. All right. Rakoskis first shot out of the gate, and he misses the head pin. No, no, these guys aren't necessarily bowling bad, folks. These lanes are tough here this evening. And how would you feel? This young man, his first shot on national television, and he misses the head pin on the left. I'd feel like I need to move a few boards to the left and get the spare. Right, hard and straight at the spare. You don't want to chop the one off the two. No trouble. That's exactly what he did. He says, all right, Pardsy, let's strike it up in the third, and we'll get something going here. And I can't, I can't remember when on a telecast, three bowlers had missed the head pin on the left. Left again. Again, he misses it. Oh, he got the head pin left to 3 9. He'd have been better off if he'd have missed it. And the guard in amazement turns around, so that adjustment didn't work. Said his game wasn't in top shape coming in here this week. He was just hoping to get a check and ended up qualifying in the number two position. Of course, he'll be moving on to Canton next week and Texas City the week after to finish up those two senior events. He's shooting this from the right. In trouble. Missed them both. Wowee. And they're just lost, Danny. I mean, they don't know what they're doing right now. They don't know where to throw. Just got to give the ball some room, even if you're afraid it's not going to come back. Uh, either that or go to something that's just doesn't bite the lane and goes dead straight. Weber with more speed on the right hand lane. Webbs nearly went down to one knee, slaps McDowell on the hand and says, All right, big fella, it's time for a double. Weber throwing his frozen rope shot. No room. Right over about the ninth or eighth board. Just a small break. All 10 in the pit. And the classic Dick Weber run out. for a double from his partner and there it is Weber up off the bench McDowell with a strike and so the team of Weber and McDowell now leads by 25 and you can see the adrenaline begins to flow something old and something new there he is just get warmed up <laughs> hey don't get me wrong I enjoy looking at ladies in bikinis just like the next guy but when I buy a sports weekly I buy it for one reason to get the straight scoop on sports. That's why I read the Sporting News, America's sports authority. It gives you terrific baseball coverage by 40 top writers on the scene where the action is, plus more stats and inside stuff than any other Sports Weekly. So if you want swimsuit pictures, sailboat stories, or funny videos, better look somewhere else.
But if you want the very best baseball coverage and weekly in-depth reports on football, basketball, hockey, and boxing, then be sure you get the sporting news. Grab this great subscription deal. Find out for yourself why over 725,000 sports fans get the sporting news weekly and get smart for themselves. Call 1-800-638-1200 and get 29 issues of the sporting news for four payments of just $4.99. You'll save 69% off the cover price, 40% off the regular subscription rate. Call now, 1-800-638-1200. Twenty-five pin lead for the team of Weber and McDowell. Dennis Rakuska stands up now in the fourth, trying to get something started for his squad. And he's the only touring player that's bowling on the right lane. We see the earring in his left ear. Uh, that's why they don't throw it right. It's because they're leaving the one, two, four, ten. See the three hundred in his earring. Uh, that's what he was hoping would happen, and obviously uh, that kind of result is not happening. I wonder if he wears a washout earring on the other side. Gonna need it now. Switches balls. I like that. Ooh, gave it a good run. Well, Rakaskis with an open. They trail by 36. Now it's up to John Handegard, the senior accountant of this team, to get a strike and get them back on track. Find the pocket. Neither one of them has been close to the 1-3 pocket. That's better. Well, two, four, five. It didn't finish. I mean, how can you go? What he's saying is, how can I make a move left like that and go from missing the head pin on the left to leaving the two, four, five? I didn't make that big a move. Looking for his first career title. I wonder if uh, uh, that lunar eclipse had anything to do with the strange lane conditions this evening. That explains it. Well, you I think it's it. a possibility. Certainly, the uh, the conditioner is moving in different directions this evening. I think it has something to do with the waves, too, and the way they go in and out, and that whole, that whole scientific thing, don't you? It must be. Yeah, 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 I think the light of the moon is affecting the lanes here this evening as well. So It's not affecting Weber, though, because his hair matches the moon. That's right. Weber, all in a double right now. out just didn't quite finish the job with the seven but his shot getting a little better out there on lane 46. Well he's gaining a little confidence and Mark McDowell is just lined in on lane 45. He hasn't been striking but he's got the pocket lined in. So he missed it once. Cross lane at the seven pin. Weber always a great spare shooter. Yeah, he never gives anything away. If you're going to beat him, you're going to have to come out and grab him right by the throat. McDowell has yet to miss the pocket. Well, he left the two pin back in the uh, second frame. That's the only time. Yeah, you're right. Close. <laughs> Boy, that good speed, good roll, and she likes it. And that's his uh, fiance, Patty Martin. I'm glad you found that on the sheet there. Thank you. I'd recognize Patty anyway. Oh, of course you would. Pretty as she is. Yep. You never forget a pretty face. All right, Dennis Rakaskis trying to settle in here and get his first strike on national television. More speed, more loft. That one may finish. Oh, shake him up a little bit. So Rakaskis gets the applause of his parents right there, and he's starting to settle down a little bit. It's getting late. Well, if his partner doesn't find something right now, they're down 35 pence. He's got a strike on this ball to put some pressure on Weber. Well, the team of Rakaskis and Handegard come bounding back. They trail by 23, but there's still life at Thruway Lanes in Buffalo.
beers that are cold filtered, only one has that distinctively clean, crisp taste. Budweiser, cold filtered and Beechwood aged for over 110 years. This Bud's for you. A few words on business and change. The journals are daily, and that gives you a real competitive advantage. It's very tough out there, but it's also very exciting. We want to be the best ally that you've got. Today's Wall Street Journal. Faster, tougher, smarter. Call 800-372-3000 for this special journal offer. 12 weeks, just $29.75 with a money-back guarantee. Call 800-372-3000 now for the Wall Street Journal. Get ready for all-out golf. Only aggressive play can make a champion at the International, Thursday and Friday at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Ah, yes, and from the greens to the hardwood here at Thruway Lanes in Buffalo, New York. And Weber wants to meet that double with one of his own. Good. Boy, what a pretty shot. Oh, that looked like the Weber of old there. That hurt him right there because McDowell is just bowling so well he's liable to come back and throw another strike right now. Too soon, right through the heart, the four, six, seven, and there's life for Akoskis and Handigard. Looked a little tentative of that one. That one was left of the target. Just a little bit. His first really errant shot, and he paid the full penalty. He gets nine out. They're going to be shooting 203. Weber tells him, get the two count. And he does. 20 pins now separating these two teams, but if Handigard. And Rakoska's strike in the eighth and the ninth were even Steven. Two big shots coming up. First, the one by Rakoska's to get him within 10 pins. Lots of loft. Looks good. Oh, it just backed off at the end. Did you see that? Boy. He thought it was a strike when he let it go. An aggressive shot, a firm shot by Rakoskis. Now, let's hope he watched average builders this evening. The follow-through looked good. He hit about the eighth board. Right here, it looked like it was going to finish. Now it quits. He switched balls and is going to go hard and straight. And makes it. Nice shot by Rakoskis in a tough situation in the eighth, a 24-pin advantage. We get a ground floor level of that first ball. And you see the one pin does not hit the two. Goes right around, gets the seven. And there it is, that nasty old bucket. The fearsome foursome. Handigard must strike here. Good roll. Good shot. Keeps him alive, barely. They can shoot 199. So Weber and McDowell need to fill the ninth and the tenth with decent count in order to go on for the championship match. Watch him spin. Oh, Weber rising to the occasion, calling on all those years of experience. Watch him see if he stays down. Looked like he kind of came up, but he got it online. And the ball gets the five. He's looking at the seven. He's running it out. Come on, come on. Thank you. The old tiger 
and the young one. That's left to target. And a guy who got no breaks in game number one gets a colossal hit late in game number two. He needed some kind of mark, and uh, that, he doesn't like it there, but it counts. He's switching balls. He's thrown a different ball in the second one of the 10th. Well, he only needs count 17 in the 10th to win, so this is an opportunity to try a practice shot. Right. Not too good a practice shot. Hmm. Well, now you just line up and throw at the stack of them, right? Well, yeah, but the thing is that he seems to have lost the line to the pocket the last three shots on this left lane, even though they're going to win the match. There's no problem winning the match. They've won that. They're going to go on, but now they're going to have to beat a very tough team of Voss and Certain. <laughs> well, they needed 17, and he came up with 18, more than enough. 207. And a winner. Well, actually, I think he was practicing for a strike on that, Dan. He wasn't shooting the spare to make it. He was trying, thinking of the next match. Good idea. Koskis gets the fingers in this one, and it overreacts. So Dennis never really, I don't think, felt comfortable on lane 46. He got one strike. Andy Guard got two. Uh, I think the count is going a lopsided runaway here for the seniors over the turning players. There's no question. Seniors have outperformed them. I think that's what makes it such a great game. You can also bring up the discussion about the women. Do they throw more strikes or less strikes than the men? That's what makes it a great game. It does. It's an equalizer. It just depends on hitting the pocket. There's a lot of different ways to do it. That's the shot that he wanted. So, $10,000 to split for Handy Guard and Rakoskis as they move on and finish third. And to the championship game it goes. Brian Voss and uh, Jimmy Certain next in line. But before we get to the title game, it's time now for an update on the latest in bowling news. You know, for 20 years, people have been asking me, how can I get objective advice about investing? I always tell people, find an independent financial advisor, someone who won't pressure you to buy specific investments. This free book can help. The Schwab Guide to Selecting a Financial Advisor. It doesn't tell you who to choose. It tells you how to choose the right person. An independent advisor who works for you, not Schwab or any other brokerage firm. Here you learn how to find a professional who can give you thoughtful, thorough, objective advice to help you reach your financial goals. This is where you start. Call today for your free copy of the Charles Schwab Guide to Selecting a Financial Advisor. Call 1-800-876-4800. 1-800-876-4800. That's 1-800-876-4800. Call Schwab now. Welcome to this week's edition of the Bowling News, brought to you by Pizza Hut, maker of pan pizza that's winning the hearts of America. Tonight's Senior Touring Pro Doubles Championship wraps up the competition this summer for the touring players. So without further ado, let's take a look at the top 10 money winners as they stack up here in 1989. Talented Mike Albee still leads his nearest pursuer, Del Ballard Jr., by nearly $100,000, while Amleto Monticelli, with a pair of wins this summer, has now moved into the number three position. Pete Weber ended up 11th here in Buffalo this week, and he remains fourth on the most current list, while Dave Ferraro completes the six-figure category. Jess Stayrook is just an eyelash short of $100,000, while our top seed, Brian Voss, regardless of his title game outcome here this evening, will surpass the $100,000 barrier for the third year in a row. Now, I know it's hard to believe that Tony Westlake did not make the telecast here this week, but he's now eighth on the money list. Randy Peterson and last week's winner, Jimmy Pensack, make up the rest of the top ten. In the average department, Pete Weber holds a commanding lead over Dave Ferraro. Peter is knocking down pins at a torrid pace. Meanwhile, Amleto Monticelli is number three, while Del Ballard Jr. and Mike Albee round out the first five. With the touring pros breaking up camp this week, here's a look at the most consistent cashers of 1989. 
Bob Anoid of Topeka, Kansas has put together a very solid year, collecting a paycheck in 22 of the 26 tournaments he's entered in 1989. Both Ron Williams and Tony Westlake rank second with 21 paydays. Meanwhile, Tom Kreitz, along with Amleto Monticelli, have headed to the pay window on 19 occasions this year, while Del Ballard Jr., Mark Williams, Jess Stayrook, and Ron Palumbi Jr. are all having very consistent seasons. And, of course, at the urging of Eastern PBA Eastern Region Director Chuck Pisano, who is also our television coordinator, we will now be uh, showing you the 1989 winners in the Eastern Region. Of course, Chuck and Frank Esposito invented the PBA Region program, so we're going to have to listen to what they say. Here's a look at the winners. is a very important part of over 20 state games. As a matter of fact, one of our very good friends, Champ Husted, had the honor of lighting the torch for the start of the Oregon State Games. Husted was a member of the old National Bowling League and, of course, is the proud father of PBA standout Dave Husted. And, of course, in the fourth year of the New York State Empire Games, Frida Gates rewrote the record books. Frida captured three golds on her way to winning five medals overall. She starred in the singles with a 268 closing game on her way to a 915 four-game series. Highlighting her outstanding performance was winning the mixed doubles competition with her husband, Don, an excellent bowler in his own right, and a nationally known bowling writer. And at the grand opening of Don Carter Vista Lanes in West Palm Beach, Florida, six young bowlers attempted to break the Guinness Book of World Records for the most pins knocked down in a 24-hour period. Well, after it appeared that the record was out of reach, five of the six fatigued bowlers just upped and quit the competition. But that's when it got exciting. 20-year-old Mike Chernobyl, pictured here with manager and PBA Hall of Famer Dave Davis, decided to go for an individual record. When the 24 hours of Vista were over, he had rolled 203 games and averaged an impressive 186. Lo and behold, there was no Guinness Book individual record, so we here at the Bowling News are now declaring it a brand new world record. It's amazing what editorial comment will get you. Well, that's it. That's a look at Bowling News from Thruway Lanes this week. Back with more right after these messages. Pizza Hut Pepperoni Lover's Pizza asks. Why is everybody always picking on me? Just one bite and you'll know this new pizza is pepperoni paradise. Two prolific pilings of pepperoni packed between two extra plentiful portions of cheese. It's Pizza Hut Pepperoni picking perfection. New Pepperoni Lover's Pizza. Why is everybody always picking on me? You know why. Making it great. And narrowly missing this week, the team of Del Warren and Glenn Allison. Allison bowled superbly last night. In the last round, he sure did. Just stay Rook bowled well all week. Had to beat Mark Roth to get into the top 18. And what's this? Tony Westlake not on a telecast. Well, his team finished up ninth. Well, he still bowled outstanding all week. Uh, Walter Ray is right there with Tommy Tuttle. Pete Weber uh, had to take a back seat to his father this week. He bowled with Bob Hart. That happens. Earl Anthony teaming up with Sam Macaron. They finished up 13th. And Guppy Troop, happy to be back in the finals, bowling with Mickey Spezio, who won this event a couple years ago. And there's a look at teams 15, 16, 17, and 18. Lots of strikes, lots of fun this week for the seniors and the touring professionals. But now we're down to just four players, just two teams left. Is the edge to Voss and Certain, or do you like McDowell and Weber? They seem to be the team of fortune here tonight. Well, I asked Mark McDowell what's happening with that left lane, and he said that it's just breaking down the heads are breaking down, which is the first 15 feet. We talked about that on the tip last week, which means the ball's hooking early for him. Now, the way they overcome that, remember that last week the guys used loft and speed, and I think that's what Mark is going to do. He tried a practice shot with that second one in the tenth there. That ball hooked less and still went high, so I think he's going to try and overpower the lane with speed and loft. Well, only time will tell. We'll head to commercial now, and when we return, the final four will compete here at Thruway Lanes. It's Voss and Certain, the top seeds against the newcomers, McDowell and Weber. We say closeout, we mean closeout. It can only happen once a year. The summer closeout at Brookdale Chrysler Plymouth. 
35 Dingle Baron Coupes. Equip the way you want them with auto, air, stereo, tilt, cruise, and more. They were 13.6, now just 10.995 or 191 per month with only 10% down. 35 LeBaron Coupes, just 10995 But when they're gone, they're gone. There's never been a better time to buy than now, so hurry to Brookdale Chrysler Plymouth Summer Closeout Sale. Conveniently located south of 694 on Brooklyn Boulevard. Warning, extreme danger from the edge of the universe. I see it, but I don't believe it. Lost in space and land of the giants. Non-stop extraterrestrial action. Hold on, the planet's Plus, big trouble for little people. You won't escape this time. So, all buckled up. Blast off for sci-fi adventure with Lost in Space and Land of the Giants on USA. Weekdays at 10, 9 Central. Scope. Scope has two powerful ingredients to kill 90% of the bacteria that cause morning breath. Scope, the best thing, first thing in the morning. One of the great advantages of doing business with a firm like Schwab is that you're dealing with professionals across the whole country. They're creating financial advantages for the individual investor. Many of our customers transfer their other brokerage accounts to Schwab because we make it easy. We help the customer complete the right form, they sign them, and we do the rest. It's that simple. Call today for free information about Schwab services, 800-873-7900. Ah, yes, and an interested onlooker, Bill Bunetta, one of the great instructors and bowlers of all time in the ABC Hall of Fame, uh, competing this week. 70 years old now, or young? Still trying to throw those strikes. And our scorekeeper, statistician, uh, Art Trask, has informed us that Weber and McDowell are switching lanes so that McDowell can finish in the 10th frame. What a bold move. They didn't do this a couple years ago when they bowled Roddy McDowell and uh, Mickey, Mickey Spezio, Spezio, and they lost the match. That's right. Still practicing here before the championship game starts. Oh, my, what a change of strategy there. Which means then that Weber will start the match because Boss also with a practice offering. Shooting is fair. Boss wants to finish the match first on the left lane. Well, the touring professionals, two of them finished on the left-hand lane, two will now finish on the right. So, McDowell and Weber with a handshake between the two of them trying to figure out how to scrape out a win. They're going to have to defeat the top seed. Well, I tell you, that I just... Don't know if I go along with that strategy of switching lanes. He has he has no idea what this left lane's gonna do right now. Hasn't thrown a ball on it for an hour and a half. Almost two hours. Hope his memory's good. He says when I bowl a good, they're all the same. Well, Weber comes out and strikes on 45, and uh, now I guess the burning question, what will McDowell do on 46? Right. We saw the uh, the trouble that Pensac had it on, on it on 46. Sure. Rakoskis so as well. Right. So two touring players have bowled on 46. I think I mentioned earlier that Rakoskis was the only one, but I was wrong there. Certain comes out hooking. Too right much. through the nose it goes. 6-10 in the first. Jimmy with five steps. Starts near the back of the approach. Holds the ball on the side. That's intentional because he's doing what he calls his fan shot. Doesn't want to lift it real hard. He just kind of chunks it out there right there. Hard straight to 6-10. He doesn't want to lift it real hard. When he holds it on the side like that, he still gets a little turn, but not a lot of lift, and the ball makes a nice gentle arc for him. PBA Player of the Year, Brian Boss, with the high average of the week of all the professionals in the event. And there you see the numbers. PBA player of the year. Well, I guess philosophy, go to the shinier ball that gets through the heads and play a little tighter. Exactly right. 
Now McDowell with a mystery shot on lane 46. If he strikes, his team's off to a double. Again, though, he has no idea where to play this lane. They did not get practice shots on this lane in between. But they knew the strategy of certain and Voss, and they decided to make this move, I'm sure, because they didn't make it two years ago. Harden firm rolls up, and he gets the wall shot. So the big gamble, apparently, in the early stages is paying big dividends. Right now it is. They're lined up on both lanes right away. Now they know where to throw. It's the question of whether they can perform under the pressure. No possible way they could line each other up and throw the ball completely different. They could still say, well, I've moved so many boards since practice or since the start of the first game that we bowled or whatever. Communication is the key. Weber looking for strike number three. Weber is in a state of shock. And this is the move of the summer thus far by the team of Weber and McDowell. Now, if certain strike, he doubles up. If he strikes, he doubles up. And uh, who knows? Well, they've, what they've accomplished, though, is they've managed to put all the pressure on the senior right now because certain has got to strike to get themselves back in the match, down by 20. Gave him more room. And gets the light hit. So certain, a little uncertain for a moment, but ends up with a strike on the right lane. And now we go back with this pressure now going on Voss, and he can even the match with a strike here. thought it was going to get didn't get out of that ball clean at all no. tried to force it down the lane and hung in the thumb fortunate to get eight get nine rather they're in the match though makes this they're down 11. Weber and McDowell lead by 11. We'll be back with more from Thruway Lanes in just a moment. Your man in Washington has come through. The Americans will be most displeased. Observe. The Argon activated radio optic laser light. Amusing, Boris, but the party demanded Bud Light. If you want the one light that outshines them all, ask for Bud Light. Where is Boris? He is enjoying a cold one. <laughs> Bud Light, because everything else is just a light. Every player is a winner. You know, Blast Back with Mac isn't just about winning great McDonald's food at all time prices. Like a 59 cent Big Mac. It's about dreaming. And if you dream when you pull a sticker on a medium or large or soft drink, you just might win a trip to a place where your dreams come true every day. The Walt Disney World Resort, featuring the spectacular new Disney MGM Studios theme park. Well, I'll play once, I'll play again. Cause every time you play, you win. I won! Sports Center coming up next, and a team that tried to qualify for the doubles this week, Dan Patrick and Bob Lee, did not make it through the first 16 games, so they're in Bristol waiting to give us the update on the baseball scores. That's right, Dan Patrick and Bob Lee Sports Center coming up next at the completion of our television here. And they're going to report on the, the Blue Jays and the Red Sox. Oh, playing. that Eastern Division tightening up. Blue Jays want to move to Fenway Park and just play all their games there. Mm -hmm. Boston fans are loving that. McDowell trying to remain perfect through four frames, and it doesn't quite happen. The soft 10 and head pin just got kind of confused in the process. His percentage of pocket carry has to be about 40. Not too good. No. But nine spare beats the heck out of all that other stuff. And just like that, they go behind. 
Weber says shake it off. Don't worry about it. Wow. The middle of that lane is hooking. You've got to throw it hard and straight right at it. You can't set it left and he did. He threw it straight but just too far left. Pick him right up by the bootstraps. He just keeps striking. That's why he's the great Dick Weber. He's almost 60 years old, taking on the PBA Player of the Year in Brian Voss. Little towel job there for Jimmy Certain. You can have a perspiration contest between him and Jim Penzak. Tell you what, this guy's tough as they come in the clutch though. Don't kid yourself. And the seniors keep rolling along, Denny. Yeah, I know I lost, Mike. Let's <laughs> you want to continue to berate this point? Where are we going to drop it at this stage? Whatever you say, Denny. That's right. The bet was uh, Buffalo Wings. Loser buys and uh, Boy, that sauce tonight for you is going to be awful hot, Mr. D. Trying for a double to increase the lead to 12. Good speed. Good shot. Boy, was that a dandy of a shot. And Boss comes up, muscles flexed with a fist, and says, hey, there you go, Coach Certain. Now the question is, can Mark McDowell regroup as we see the tremendous form of Brian Voss? John Jowdy says he has the best form of anybody that he's ever seen. And there's the result. Whew. McDowell's got to regroup, put it back in there, and this time he must strike to get his team even in the match, or virtually even. Oh, he gave that one some roll. Pretty shot. Well, when that one came off his hands, it was rolling, rolling, rolling. Now it's a two-pin deficit of Weber strikes here. His squad back up by eight. Both teams just bowling great and we know the lanes are just tougher than nails and they're responding under this kind of pressure. Will it hold? Yes, what a shot. Well, Weber with high fives to go around strikes, and this team has come surging back. They now lead by eight. Boy, down by 12, strike twice, and you're up by eight. Pressure shifts back and forth. It's like last week's matches. And what, what it comes down to is we see which person is going to crack first. to hurry. Oh, what a pretty shot and leaves that hard 10. Man. Excellent shot by certain from Huntsville, Alabama. Winner this year of the PBA Showboat Seniors Championship, his first event as a senior. I have a feeling he's going to win a few more of those before it's all said and done. Slipped. Ooh. Made it. He's a grinder, this certain. Yeah, he definitely is a grinder. That's a good description of Jimmy. He just keeps hanging in there, hanging in there, throwing the ball in the pocket, making his spares, trying, trying. Nine pins. Ten. Back to back hard tens. It's going to make it a 10 pin match if he makes this spare. They're still in it. Only like two pretty shots there coming up 9 9. Well, we've seen a lot of hard tens tonight, Denny. Yeah, you're right. Ron Palumbi left a couple. And we McDowell know McDowell left, McDowell a few. left several in that uh, second game. That'll just tear your heart out in this game. 
40 mile an hour fastball. Ross shakes his head. His team now trails by 10 and the McDowell strikes here. It's a 20 pin deficit. Well two strikes by one by McDowell and the other by Weber would really almost seal it but uh, we'll wait and see what happens. Shot. Boy knocks that 10 out of there. As good a shot as you can make under this kind of pressure. Watch the loft and the turn. Swings it out to about the seventh board. Watch the six pin now. To the sideboard, knocks out the 10, puts him ahead by 20. to come up and oh a tickle of the seven that Weber wall shot all those years he'd have loved to have had that one. He went for it oh reliable but it's <laughs> let it go. Here's Mark McDowell just before Weber sh throws please come on. Tell you what Weber was throwing strikes before that kid was ever born. Long before. Mm hmm. No mistakes now. Has it, and he's finished. His work is done. Unless we would have a tie. And boy, has he bowled brilliantly here this evening. 19 pins of difference. Important for Jimmy Certain to set his partner up for the 10th frame. to hold and does he hit the right lane as well as anyone and he's done 19 pins PBA player of the year Brian Voss this is what he wanted the 10th frame where he can step up here now and strike it out to put his team ahead first one cuts it to nine well, he strikes out he forces McDowell to double correct he needs two and nine to do that carry yes down to nine then it doesn't come any better than this I'll tell you what I guess and we still have a possibility of a tie if he would go let's see let me get my addition one more and then nine wind up with 226 and a double by no no it, yeah strike spare by uh 236 he will have. Boy, right. I'm not adding here, Denny. I haven't been at this long enough. It's that lunar eclipse. That's what it is. Yeah, right. yeah no question. I do, I do know this. This puts him ahead. Right. Plenty of speed. Oh, boss wanted it. Oh, oh. Pin rolling around and almost got it. Head pin nearly flicked at the 10. So a solid and Outstanding performance by Voss in the tenth as he glares at the board. Couldn't quite get it done. Watch the six pin. Tried to get out of that gutter, but just couldn't get out. Now the pin rolls around. Didn't miss by much. So Voss and Certain with a top seed type performance end up with 226. And what it boils down now is Mark McDowell needs some kind of mark, a spare or strike to win. Ian Weber finished second two years ago in this event. It's there. Oh, what a shot.
So McDowell with a just a picture perfect strike. And he and Weber right now are in the driver's seat. He needs one pin. On two balls. I think even I can handle that. Doesn't waste any time. Let's it rip down the middle. And there's the other break. So McDowell and Weber. The handshakes from Boston certain that was as good a title match as you could have asked for. As tough as these lanes were to shoot 240 and 220 with taps. And so it's all said and done. 243 to 226. And Weber and McDowell, our winners, will be back with the champions from Thruway Lanes right after this final timeout. This is unbelievable. People are knocking down the doors and falling head over heels to get ESPN's Biff Bam Boom Anything Goes Bloopers video cassette. But you don't have to fight the crowds or even get out in all that traffic because you can get your own exclusive copy of the amazing Biff Bam Boom Anything Goes Bloopers free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated, the weekly sports magazine that covers all the sports better than all the rest. Always hard hitting these high flying bloopers of 45 minutes of the silliest slap happy side you've ever seen or heard. <laughs> You'll go round and round, up and down, through the fence, across the street and over the wall. You'll bounce here, there, and everywhere from one sport to another all over the world. But don't let your guard down for a second. You have to be ready for it all because nothing beats ESPN's Biff Bam Boom Anything Goes Bloopers. Yeah, this is pretty good. People will do almost anything to see what happens when anything goes, but all you have to do is call this number now to get it all free from Sports Illustrated. And if you call now, not only will you get this great videotape free, you'll also get SI's 35th Anniversary Edition. It's an all-star look at almost four decades of sports. Then you'll get a beautiful start of the new decade with the 1990 edition of the famous swimsuit issue. Filled with sunny surprises, it's included free with your subscription. Plus, you get season previews of your favorite sports and the excitement of SI every week, and you save almost 50% off the cover price. You pay in three monthly installments of only $9.95 each, and you can charge it. That's 21 issues in all, including the free swimsuit issue. Call the number on your screen now and save on SI and get the amazing Biff Bam Boom, Anything Goes Bloopers, and the swimsuit issue free. Plus SI's anniversary issue and all the action of Sports Illustrated every week. Get there. Stay ahead of the crowd. Call now and get ESPN's Biff Bam Boom Anything Goes Bloopers free from SI. Good luck, yeah. Ah, the winners of the Senior Touring Pro Doubles, Mark McDowell and Dick Weber. A nice round of applause. And with me now, Phil Cantonese, Vice President of Bell Markets, uh, with a beautiful trophy and a check. Phil? I'd like to congratulate both Mark and Dick on uh, a tremendous effort tonight in showing what true professionals they are. And uh, Mark, again, congratulations to you, and here's your check for a well-deserved war. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody out here in Buffalo. Jack Donlin, uh, Great tournament, thanks a lot. It's an honor to win with Dick, and I'll never forget it. All right, Jack, you also have a check and a trophy for Mr. Dick, Weber. Congratulations on behalf of Thruway Lanes and Bell's Markets. When you guys decided to start striking, you finally did it. Well, thanks very much, Jack. Thanks, thank you, Phil, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, Con Bowl and A-Bell's. It's been a great pleasure, and I got a heck of a partner here, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Well, just... One, one question for you, Mr. Weber. You've won in four decades. Uh, are you going to go into the year 2000 with these victories? Well, when it, when it comes around to uh, my uh, 70th birthday, I'll be taking seven steps, and uh, Mark and I will still be bowling together probably. I don't know. And, Mark, what about you? You got a chance to bowl with a Hall of Famer quickly. Well, it's my second time. I got to bowl with Dick. The first time was an honor. I'm one of the chosen few, I guess, to bowl with him twice. Well, you might become yet another Weber son before it's all said and done. We're going to say goodbye here from Thruway Lanes in Buffalo, New York. The champions, Dick Weber and Mark McDowell. The championship Pro Doubles Championship have been brought to you by The Good Time, The Great Taste of McDonald's. By Tenactin. If the burning and itching of athlete's foot keeps coming back, reach for Tenactin. Just recommend most. And by Budweiser. Beachwood aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you.
Next week, the PBA Summer Tour heads to Canton, Ohio and Hall of Fame lanes for the championship round finals of the $115,000 Ebonite PBA Senior Championship beginning at 9.30 Eastern Time live on ESPN. United Airlines, from the ground up, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. Fenway Park, where Toronto losses are most foreign. Tonight on SportsCenter, Roger Clemens looks to punch out that Blue Jay jinx. Nolan Ryan approaches the land of 5,000 caves. Last night, he needed extra innings to keep the streak. Jerome Walton at work tonight. That roar you heard was the Mets' wake-up call. That record you'll see broken is one of track's oldest. And the frustration in Miami is giving way to hope. All tonight on SportsCenter. Welcome to Sports Center, along with Dan Patrick. I'm Bob Lee. We start with baseball. We start in Boston in the last.